Hello and welcome back. My name is Ted and this is Ted K Studio. Today I want to show you how to create an awesome schemorphic illustration. We're going to turn this into this. So let's jump into it. Just to so understand what schemorphism is, it's essentially taking something and recreating it as it would be in real life in the digital format. So a while ago, iPhones used to look like this. Everything had textures, depth, layers, like you can see from this settings icon here, how it's layered, it has these textures. Um, this paper has like a torn texture and schemorphism back then was heavy and it went away for a while. Now it's making a comeback and I'm seeing more and more people post it, but it seems like they've made it a little bit more tasteful and a bit more exciting. So I wanna show you how to create your own skeuomorphic icons, skeuomorphic illustrations. All you need to know is the basics and once you got that down, you can make anything you want. To demonstrate this skeuomorphic design, I'm gonna use the Cash App icon here and we're gonna add dark shadows, we're gonna add gradients and highlights to this and we're gonna create that skeuomorphic look. So the first thing I wanna do is add a gradient to this backdrop here. And I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna add a linear gradient from the top to the bottom. And what we want to do is we want to make the bottom here a little bit lighter and the top a little bit darker. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add effects. So I'm going to go to the effects panel here on the right and I'm going to create an effect and it's going to create a drop drop shadow by default. So what I'll do is just increase the drop shadow and let's make it 200 blur just so it's nice and spread out and then I'm going to make the opacity lighter and you never want to use a solid black drop shadow. You want to use a off color because uh, solid black drop shadows tend to be muddy like you can see here for example whereas if we use some of the color like a darker green it'll look a little bit better so what i want to do is just make this about 50 percent opacity and the next thing i'm going to do is add another effect in the effects panel this time is going to be inner shadow like i mentioned in the beginning highlights and shadows is really how you make the skeuomorphic look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this inner shadow and then i'm going to increase the blur to 50. i'm going to make it white not black and we're going to actually make it an off green color like a very light off green color and then what i want to do is increase the y axis to make it go down a little bit more we're going to do plus 40 and I'm gonna play with the opacity here to make it not as strong at the top there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the inner shadow. We're gonna click copy and paste, control C, control V. And we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do minus 40 now so that the shadow pushes from the bottom. And we're gonna make it from a light color to a darker color. And you don't wanna use black or white colors. You wanna use off colors of whatever color you're using here. So for example, this is a green color, so I'm gonna use like a darker green. And you can see how I've added this inner shadow on the top and the bottom, how it's already giving this rounded effect to the app tile background. From here, we're really just adjusting and playing with opacities just to make it sure it looks right. Also, the reason why we made that linear gradient in the background is so that whatever shadow we apply to the top or bottom really has a contrast to the color. So for example, if I make this darker, well, now that shadow isn't as vibrant or visible at the bottom there. Whereas if it's a lighter color, you can really see it and have it stand out. So I, I really like the bottom here. I think this is looking great. I just wanna see what I can do for the top here. And I think just increasing it might help. Maybe making a bit more green. I think that's looking pretty good. So now that we got the main icon backdrop, what we wanna do is apply the same schemorphic effect to the cache icon here. So we're gonna start by doing the same process as we did for the background card. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a drop shadow again. So in the effects panel, we're gonna click, it's gonna create a drop shadow. Let's make it larger from four to 40. Let's make the Y 30. And keep in mind, all the numbers depend on how large the object you're working with is. For example, my object is around 533 pixels by 533. So if you're working with a smaller icon, a smaller size, you might need less of these drop shadows and shadow sizes. So just keep that in mind. And let's change this from black to a dark green. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity just so it's not as strong. Maybe make the Y axis even more, like 40. Blur, let's make it nice and blurred out. And I think that's looking pretty good. And now we're gonna add another effect. We're gonna change it from drop shadow to inner shadow. Uh, and we also wanna make this cache icon a linear gradient. We're gonna make it from a gray, a bluish gray color to a white at the bottom, full opacity. And now we want the top inner shadow to be a highlight, a light one. So I'm gonna make it full opacity. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit there. And you wanna make sure that this is dark enough where the top highlight will be visible against it. So what I'm gonna do is increase that blue for this inner Inner shadow I'm gonna increase the Y just so that it comes down a little bit more and then let's increase the blur a little bit 
slightly so it feels a bit more soft. And then I'm gonna copy and paste this again and do the same process, negative nine, so it comes up from the bottom. And I kinda like how it has a light from the bottom as well, but what I wanna do is make it green to have a reflection of the card behind it on the dollar icon. So that, that looks pretty awesome. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more blurred and a little bit less opacity there. So I really like that effect. By just adding the inner shadow from the top and the bottom, we're really giving it this morphic rounded soft effect. You can just leave it at that, or you can take it one step further and add little highlights. So we're gonna add these highlights by hand, and what I'm gonna do is go up here, and I'm gonna draw a shape that matches the flow of the object. And we're gonna make it white here, and then we're gonna add a layer blur effect on it and some rounding. And right now what I'm doing is just adding these little highlights. What you wanna avoid is making them too harsh or they won't look natural. So what I did is kind of blur it out a little bit. And also what you wanna do is add a linear gradient to the highlight so that it's not just the same color throughout so that it works like real objects do where wherever the impact of the light hits, that's the brightest and then it fades down and fades away. So it's it might be a little difficult to see, but at the top here, it's the most bright. And then as it fades away, uh, it spreads out. And then I'm gonna try to add another one right here. And you really want it to follow the shape that it lays on just so that it looks reasonable and real. I'm just gonna copy and paste that style. And then let's add just one more at the bottom here. So it's these little details that really make it pop and shine. And I'm really liking the way this looks. I think it looks great. The last step is adding an interesting background that complements the design. We can just leave it like this if you'd like, if you really want the colors to pop. However, what I want to do is add a little bit of green to the background so that it feels like it's in a lockup or, or a mockup there. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this to the right here and then I'll add some rounding to the card and let's add a gradient to the background here. So what I'm gonna do is make it light at the top and then we'll add some green towards the bottom. However, I want the main icon to be the, the focal point. So what I'm gonna do is just make this very light. And you can play around where the light source comes from to see which one looks better which direction looks better. Now what I wanted to do to really make this pop off the background is just apply a drop shadow. We did apply one, but it's not dark enough. So what I wanna do is make it a bit darker, move it down a little bit more and then pick the right color. You want it dark enough where you can see it on the background, but not dark enough where it competes with this bottom shadow here. And now when we zoom out, it's looking pretty good. I think I might wanna make it a little bit lighter, just barely visible there. And now you can see the major difference from start to finish. Let me just uh, erase all of the effects from this one right here. And now we can see how easy it is to create skeuomorphic designs. So try a different icon, see what you can create. I'd love for you to share in our Discord. We have a design Discord server that's free to join and you can share your work for feedback. You can share your work in progress and just kind of hang out with us and chill. If you enjoyed this video and you feel like you've learned something, please drop a like, subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what you would like me to create a video about next and I'll see you next time. Cheers.